What is up guys, it is KikiZilla101 here yet again, and welcome back to Kiki and Coffee, the show where we casually talk about stuff and put in as minimal effort as possible. Wow, whoa, I almost poured, dumped that. Uh, while we drink coffee, so grab your coffee, tea, or other preferred beverage, and let's get straight into the video. So when these first came out, yesterday? Was it yesterday? Um, I think it was last night they came out. I saw them. I just decided not to do a reaction video. I wanted to see individual pictures so I could really get full opinions on these new Safari figures. Um, and so I waited, and this is the reveal image right here, actually. I have the fan on. I'm sorry if it causes a little bit of background noise. This is a different fan, but I'm trying to see if it it's not too bad. Uh, I didn't want to make a video on these because I wanted to make sure that I got the full promo images to really get all the different angles and get good views of them before I really uh, got to sink in my opinions on the... Um, partners.safariltd.com website. Um, it's like a web, it's a version of the website for their partners. I don't know how somebody got a hold of it. I don't, I've never even used it before, but I got linked it and I looked on there and we got uh, much more high res images of all of the Safari 2020 stuff. So that's pretty cool. But we're gonna be looking at the pre-store releases. There's gonna be two parts to this. Um, there's like a two part video. This first part is gonna be what most of you guys really want me to do is just uh, show my thoughts and opinions on each of the figures individually what I think of them. This part will be that. The second part will be more of me talking about the general line in itself, why I was disappointed with it, and giving some feedback to Safari, kind of explaining some of my opinions and why I felt really disappointed when this line was revealed. So please go ahead and watch that video after this one, but I also wanted to make sure that they kept them separate so neither video kind of dragged on for too long. Yep, so here's the website I'm at. I'll link it inside of the, the description. Now I pulled up each of them on their individual pages, so we'll just kind of go in order. So the Pachycephalosaurus. This one was actually leaked a while back. Um, one of my friends made me aware of it. It was a unpainted version of this figure. It was clearly a Doug Watson skull, so I knew it was Safari. It was on a really sketchy website. I actually ended up sending the figure to Safari to warn them that somebody is trying to sell and uh, bootleg their figure, but I did not want to share it. I did not want to be the person to leak things out. I don't like leaks. I don't approve of leaks. I think it's unfair to the company who wants to reveal them on their own pace, and I think they should be allowed to, so I, de I didn't want to have any part in that leak, but I did see this figure a while back. I wasn't too happy with it when I saw the unpainted version, if I'm being honest. The head is a little inaccurate to a Pachycephalosaurus. It looks a little bit um, more like a juvenile Pachy head, um, or sub-adult, I should say, a little bit more of a young individual rather than a fully adult one. There's a little bit of the concave slope to the, the front of the face and bulbous shape to the actual pad up here. But even though it, it is inaccurate, the head is inaccurate, I find it very aesthetically pleasing. And I actually think the colors saved a lot of it here. And I, I was iffy on them at first on the big reveal picture, the black looked kind of weird. But I have to say in these up close images, I'm really digging the colors. Um, there's a picture in here, this one. You can see that that's actually like a whitish blue color and it looks beautiful. I love it. Definitely one I'm getting. I need to get this Pachycephalosaurus. It looks great. I don't know how I feel about the arms. The arms look like straight up the arms from the 2012 Ceratosaurus, which have like these really weird bendy arms. Seems really kind of old and kind of weird, but I can easily get over that. But it's beautiful. Just look at it. It looks beautiful. I love it. An easy, easy win. Now this is the Chiansaosaurus. Um, now I did look up how to pronounce that. I actually had to look up uh, Chinese Mandarin or Mandarin Chinese pronunciation for each of the syllables in order to figure out how to say that. I know that on the Dan's Dinosaurs reveal image it, it said how to pronounce it, but I didn't trust that because in my Safari catalog that I have, it actually says to pronounce U Tyrannus U Tyrannus with a T-I-H. And obviously you say Tyrannus Tyrannus. I mean, it's spelled just like Tyrannosaurus. So I don't know why they messed that up. So I didn't really trust their translation to how to do it. So I looked into it myself. And from my research, it is Chiansaosaurus. Chiansaosaurus. That's how you're supposed to pronounce it. So Chiansaosaurus, this one... I did not like when I first saw the promo images. I was not really happy that the pose looked pretty awkward and stuff. I have to say though, I really warmed up to it with these other pictures and this is why I wanted to wait until I got these other pictures. I've really warmed up to it. Not a huge fan of the colors, but they look better here. There's a little bit more green to it, which is really nice. Um, the the scalation is very good. I love the way that the, the arms look. The arms look really cool with these sharp claws. I think I have to get it because it looks really cool, but I still do not like the mouth. I have to be honest, I don't, 
like the mouth very much because it's still got that problem that the Carnotaurus and Allosaurus had. They have these really tiny teeth and then these big lips, and it's not just that the big lips are covering the teeth, it's the teeth are actually a little bit small as well. And so it just, it's aesthetically unpleasing to me. And you can't really argue the scientific accuracy for it either because our best skin preservation evidence of any Tyrannosaurus face is Despletosaurus taurosus. That's what usually people are referencing, but that fossil in itself is more evidence against lips on Tyrannosaurus in particular than it is evidence for lips. It's very clear that the, the skin was preserving very nicely and there's a distinct line from where the skin ends before the teeth. And so you can't really argue the scientific accuracy towards the lips. Now if that's just your, your opinion, you want to have that lips as a creative choice, cool, I'm, I'm great for it. But I really wish we could have seen some more teeth. I'm not a fan of how the mouth came out on this one. Overall though, I'm really impressed with a lot of that and I'm really looking forward to getting my hands on the Chian Saosaur. Deinonychus. This one when I saw it, one was like, oh my god, that's my favorite. It looks so cool, it looks poofy, it looks amazing like Velociraptor from the 2017 line. This isn't the first thing I noticed, but eventually one of my friends did point out that it's actually a tripod and a really kind of weird one at that because the tail's curving down and it just, its tail would never be able to do that in life. That's not how Dromaeosaurus tails can bend, they actually can't. They're stiffened rods and the only place where they are a little bit more mobile is actually at the base, so it curving like that is really inaccurate. But the way that this one went from so high up to so far down, the eye, its eye is so far back, it's in the temporal finestra. It's it's really far back on the head. If you look at the, the skulls, and I did a lot of research into the skull, if you're ever thinking of that more triangular shaped head, that's actually really outdated, that's a very old skull. Deinonychus did have much more of a slender skull, kind of more similar and akin to a Velociraptor or a, a Raptor. The eye is really far back, and it, it kind of bothers me. You know, they say that the eye is the window into the soul, and the, the eye placement really bugs me here. I just... I can't get over it. It, it looks really far back. Um, this side does look a little better. These are hand sculpted models, so usually there's asymmetry to the faces of these models. And this one, it seems like one side actually works to the favor, but this one is... Oof, I don't... I don't know how I feel about that one. That's really unfortunate. Um, anyways, the concavenator. To me, the colors strike me as like the old, old figures, like really old safari. Like it has these mixes of colors, like the green in here just feels really unnatural. I don't, it's very muted out and there's just like this subtle mixture of colors. I'm not a fan of the colors, but more than that, it's, it's posture looks really stiff. There's something going on with the tail. There's some weird bending going on with the tail that just makes it look really awkward. And this black bar across its mouth, this like straight line looks really weird to me. The hands don't look too bad now that I'm looking at him. I definitely like the older version of the Concavenator better, the Safari Carnegie one. Look at that face. Ah, that mouth does not look good to me. I'm, I'm sorry. I, I just, uh, I, the detail looks all right. I don't know, that mouth, just like the straight line with the little frown to it. And then there's like these like weird bubbles that the like line doesn't even straighten. It's like warping there. It doesn't look good to me. I'm sorry. I, I have to be honest. The Concavenator is definitely the, the weakest model objectively. Sarcosuchus. Awesome, we finally got a Sarcosuchus. I've been wanting a Sarcosuchus for like forever. I'd be lying if I said this is exactly what I wanted. Very disappointed in the fact that its mouth is closed. Here's the thing. You pick Sarcosuchus as a genus to depict in your figure form because of its head. That's why people like Sarcosuchus. It has such a unique head. And I feel like closing its mouth just hurts, you know, displaying that really awesome mouth. And I like that they were trying to go for more of a walking pose. That's interesting. Much more naturalist. I really wish it had its mouth open. It also has almost the exact same color scheme as the uh, Caprosuchus. It has the same color palette. It, they even have the green eyes. And it also has the same color scheme as the Spinosaurus. The Spinosaurus is a little bit more of a vibrant orangey gold to it. But other than that, the color scheme is the same with the Spinosaurus. And the Spinosaurus also has green eyes. Not like the Acro and the Presto where they have like copy and pasted color scheme. This is three. There's the Capro, the Spino, and now the Sarco all have very extremely similar color schemes. Kind of a little disappointing. The sculpting, this is a 10 inch model, and the fact that there's such big scales, a lacking of fine detail is quite disappointing if I'm being honest. The tail looks really stubby to me. And the, oh yeah, this. What is going on with the front teeth there? Why has it got like beaver chunks going on? It's got like two big pieces of 
teeth going on right there. Then there's the, the Shringosaurus. I like the genus choice. I'm glad we're getting more of those like obscure um, Archosaurian animals. Unfortunately, this isn't Permian stuff or anything like in Paleozoic. It's actually a Triassic animal, but it looks very cool, very interesting animal. I like the vibrant colors. It's very well sculpted. It has that Komodo dragon-esque quality to it that the Dimetrodon has that I really like so much, and I'm glad that I uh, waited to see these up-close images because it really delivers, in my opinion. I don't really care for how the, the mouth looks, but on out of all of the straight mouth ones this year, this one looks the best, and it's actually the most appropriate because its mouth was fairly straight. But I don't like this cheek thing that's going on. It has like these cartoon Vs at the end of its mouth that kind of give it this like cheek appearance, and I don't like it. I think it looks weird. But other than that, it looks pretty good. So I'm definitely going to be getting a hold of this one. Edmontosaurus. Ugh. This is another one I'm not really thrilled about. When I first saw it, I immediately noticed something was really off about it. Did check, the head looked big to me, but it actually checks out in proportion to its legs, its torso and stuff like that. The head actually checks out. It's actually very accurate to the animal. The thing that makes the head look big is the fact that its back is so... Edmontosaurus had these very tall vertebrae and actually would have had formed a somewhat of a hump uh, similar to an Acrocanthosaurus of sorts. So it would have had a much higher back line. From my research, this is definitely the issue that's causing it to look weird to me, is that the, that the spine is very low. The tail also seems to be quite short and a little bit stubby. That spine really kind of ruins it for me, if I'm being honest. I don't really like these lines on its face. They're just really repetitious and very thin and it looks like the rest of the model was painted and then the, those kind of look like they're like sharpie that just was kind of put on there they just look like inconsistent how fine they are it looks inconsistent with the rest of it and i like the the head shape the head shape seems to be done fairly well and the crest looks much better here even though that i think the red sticks out a bit much i wish it was like a blue or something i feel like that would have maybe fit in a little better the detail looks really nice looks really 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 nice i don't know that that back line is just this picture it looks pretty good right here uh hopefully i'll warm up to it with time Here's the best one of the year. The ichthyosaurus is amazing. I, apparently already people are saying the ichthyosaurus is overrated. Shut up! The ichthyosaurus is amazing! I- this thing is beautiful, like, just utterly beautiful. This thing, I promise you, has the- the potential to become my new favorite Safari LTD figure. Uh, this ichthyosaurus looks really, really cool. I love how blubbery and chubby he is. It's up up to date with the new um, blubber study on ichthyosaurus. It looks just beautiful. I love the eyes. Unfortunately, even in the prototype, it looks like the eyes are asymmetrical. Fortunately, you're not. Hopefully, you won't be looking too much at it from the front. There was an ichthyosaur that was discovered with with the skin, and the pigment was preserved. And so we know that at least one, uh, some type of ichthyosaurus did have the counter shading with the black and the white. So it's really cool that they did that. Um, some people have compared it to orcas, but I think they're just trying to follow up on that color scheme that we know that uh, that genus of ichthyosaur actually had. I love it. 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 Look at that picture. That is beautiful. I love it coming out of the water. That looks gorgeous. I just love these marine reptile figures that is beautiful just utterly amazing utterly amazing i love it i love it love it love it love it for the final one dilophosaurus so this is a genus i was really looking forward to seeing reimagined at some point at first i was a little disappointed because it just it didn't wow me but I did notice one thing that made me really happy, is that it actually has a coelophysoid type body, and they really nailed that. Smaller head, the longer neck, the very narrow and slender proportions throughout the body. Great job. Great job. You nailed the way the Dilophosaurus' body style works. I love it. I don't know why they made the tail really long. The tail is definitely too long on this one. I checked up with the skeletals. This doesn't match up. It reminds me of uh, Cynoceropteryx, that one with the really long bushy tail with the bands on it. <laughs> the bands don't really help the, the, the comparison. The colors aren't super exciting. They're kind of boring, but they do the job. It's nothing to complain about. It is a tripod, by the way. A little disappointing that they resorted to another tripod, but then again, it's kind of hard to balance those little guys with little legs, and hopefully it'll make it more stable overall. I think we we learned our lesson with the Anzu Wily Eye. The head is really where my issue is, because the reason people like Dilophosaurus is for its head. Also, good job on them for um, depicting the fourth finger vestigial without a claw, almost sunken into the hand. But the, the head is where you come to for Dilophosaurus, and on this Dilophosaurus model, unfortunately, I think it misses the mark. See, the, the crests are fine, the mouth bothers me. For one, it's closed, which just innately is an issue for me. I'd really like to see Dilophosaurus's mouth open because then you get to see its teeth. I mean, Dilophosaurus has these awesome teeth. It has this 
cool notch in its jaw like a spinosaur it has these long gnarly teeth and that in combination with its amazing crest is just uh, it's a beautiful head it's an awesome head and i feel like having its mouth closed in such a subdued posture they might be trying to go for a really supernaturalistic look and more calm and less like other Dilophosaurus and stuff, but I, I'd be lying if I said I wasn't a little disappointed that we didn't get to see more of the teeth there. I also don't like that the, the, the V thing again for the cheeks. It just looks, it looks weird. I have never seen an animal with a V thing. That's usually what you see in like cartoony characters where they, you know, trying to make a cheek type thing. So yeah, those are my thoughts on these figures so far. Um, I'd really like to know what your guys' thoughts are in the comment section below. Start up discussion, tell me what your thoughts of each figure is, tell me what your thoughts on my thoughts are. Please, please, please go check out the second part of this video. I'm gonna talk about why overall I was pretty disappointed with this line and some of the feedback I have to Safari. Safari really listens to their fans as a testament um, to that you can look at the 2018 and 2019 lines. I mean, we, we gave them feedback Feedback that we wanted more colors and those those lines they boomed out the colors they really listen to their fans guys they really do there was just a couple there's a couple figures here that I don't really think hit the mark um, and I'd like to give them some feedback on that because Safari really listens they're my favorite uh, figure company and I love them dearly and I want to try to help uh, give them my opinion so that we can all learn and grow from uh, this experience and I know that Safari will they always they always do uh, so thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.